October 19th, 942 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. Hello guys and welcome to TGN The Game Nerd The Shore. I talk about all play games and today we're going to be playing Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and we did a lot actually. We talked to Cody who basically told us that the Steel Samurai did it and now we've got a bit of a disadvantage. Thankfully, we've got Mia in court with us, so, you know, we've got 50-50 odds. Um, Mr. Wright? Yes? Why do you look so unhappy? Uh, oh, oh, nothing. <laughs> really, it's nothing. Right, Mia? Uh-oh, she looks even unhappier. Phoenix, your client is now practically a dead man walking. Perhaps that's why I feel particularly close to them. This is no time for dead people jokes, please. You know we're going into this trial utterly defenseless, yet if Mr. Powers truly is innocent, we should be able to find something overlooked in the evidence to prove it. Something overlooked? You have to find something, Phoenix. Today. It's that or lose the trial. This isn't going to be easy. October 19th, 10 o'clock a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. The court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. An unexpected fact has come to attention of the, the attention of the court. Yesterday, we learned that there were other people present at the studios. Today, I would like to show evidence proving they had nothing to do with the murder. Very well. You may call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth. I wonder if that producer is going to come out. The prosecution calls Mr. Sal Manella to the stand. Or that director. Will the witness state his name and profession? How rude can you get? You don't know me? I'm the director. I make the steel samurai noob ruffle. Salmonella. I'm a director. Television. Were you at Global Studios on the day of the murder? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about the events of that day. Phoenix. Let's start by picking this testimony apart. If Powers is innocent, you know what that means. Someone in the trailer on that day did it. R right. She doesn't waste any time get putting on the pressure. Yeah, that's Mia for you. The day of the murder. I was at the studio from around 9 o'clock that morning. During the morning, I was doing um an action she run through. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. I searched that everyone else that wants to in the employee area, but I had a meeting in the studio through the trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. We were in some meeting until around 4 o'clock. During the meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one left their chairs. That's about it. Hmm. The time of Mr. Hammer's death was 2.30 p.m. And according to your testimony, you were in a meeting at that time. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, the day of the murder. Press number one. Is that when you always come into work? Oh, so no, I come in at all sorts of hours. It's the industry way. Yeah, I know all about the freaks in your industry. <laughs> Still, for what it's worth, I'm pretty busy all day. Tell us more about that. Certain this morning, I was doing, um, an action scene run through. In the employee area? That's right. It was a fr fight scene between the steel samurai and the evil magistrate. Is anyone else at the run through? Oh yeah, the security lady was sitting there watching the whole thing, lol. She was cheering on Hammer, if you can believe it. She certainly has the lungs for it. <laughs> Anyone else? 
Nope, just just four. It took a lot more time than I thought it would. Why did it go on so long? Um, I'm pretty sure you've heard about this already, but Mr. JBP twists his ankle during the run through, see? Oh, right, that's the limp. Which of course led to me missing my lunch, Ross. Ross? Rolling on the floor, starving? I hear this everyone else ate lunch in the employee area. Whoop. What exactly did they have for lunch? Sea bones steak, you just to cook some up. Come to think of it, there was a plate with some bones on it in the employee area. Everyone else, meaning that the witness did not eat with them. But I had a meeting in the Studio 2 trailer, so I ended up skipping lunch. So in the end, you didn't get to eat. Yeah, your steak at least. Can you believe it? That must have been tough. Phoenix. Yeah? Doesn't something about that seem odd to you? It's contradictory. Yeah, it does seem odd now that you mention it. Mr. Manella! Mm hmm? What do you mean, Trish? He just said your name. When I went to that trailer, I saw something on the table. There were two plates on the table, the same kind of the plates as the employee area. Who ate lunch there? <laughs> no, it's... I... Um, <laughs> good call. I, uh, I was embarrassed, so I didn't mention it, but I hear you after all. A T-bone steak, you mean? Yeah, well, I mean, this is so much through all that trouble. I brought it to the trailer, thinking I could eat it later. Clearly a man who likes to eat. I suspect, suspected as much. Jesus Christ, Phoenix. <laughs> so, when exactly did you eat it? Check one big screen at me. I, uh, oh, she's am dead. Mental image I will carry with me to my grave. Wait a second. If they took a break in that meeting, that contradicts his testimony. I'll press on that one a bit more. So we were in the meeting until around 4 o'clock. What are you discussing? The Sith Samurai story in our budget. Get this, his partner turns to me and say, Mr. Manila, your script of ours are not appropriate for children. Can you believe it? Actually, I kind of can. So nobody left the table during the whole meeting? During this meeting, well, I'm pretty sure no one left their chairs. You didn't take a single break? Uh, well, yeah, not a one. Hmm, what's he sweating so much about, I wonder? If only I had an idea. Wait a second, maybe I do have an idea. Wait a second. Mr. Manella, you've just contradicted yourself. Didn't you just tell the court that you ate a T-bone steak during the break? Oop, Raffle. Well? Um... Mr. Manella, what's this all about? Well, yeah, I guess it did take a little break. Phoenix, great job. If they took a break, one of them could have gone to the studio during that time. Your Honor, I call on the witness to testify to the court about this break. Very well. Mr. Manella, your testimony, please. Urk! <laughs> uh oh, Edgeworth is laughing. Yeah, that's never a good sign. The break. Yeah, if it was worse, we took a break, Raffle. But it was only 15 minutes. 15, that's only 13 and big 12. Not enough time for someone to say, commit murder in Studio One, lol. That's only just enough time to eat a T-bone steak, if you ask me, seems. Hmm. I don't think it would even be enough time for that, but that's just me. Very well, you may begin that cross-examination. The break. Yeah, I probably took a break, Raffle. What time exactly did you take this break? Hmm. I say it was from around 2.30 or so until 2.35. 2.30? That's the time of death. So he could have gone to Studio One, killed Hammer, and come back. I guess it's possible, time-wise. Time-wise. But it's only 15 minutes. 15, that's so certain, 12. 
What were you doing for those 15 minutes? My keyboard shake. What else? There were two plates on the trailer table. Oh, right. The only other one was Steve Sorry, Steve Vasquez's plate. Steve Vasquez, the producer. To eat a T-bone steak in 15 minutes, that's quite a feat. Danny F. Kemp's going to see commit murder in Studio One, lol. Or lol. Or however you pronounce it. Why is that? Haven't we had enough of this pointless line of questioning? Your Honor, the testimony to this point has made one certain fact painfully clear. The people in the trailer had nothing to do with this murder. It was impossible for any of them to go to Studio One. What? Something wrong, Mr. Wright? Surely you aren't suggesting that one of the people in the trailer went to Studio One. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright. Phoenix, this is critical. Think about it before you give your answer. You claim someone from the trailer went to Studio One. No, it's impossible, unfortunately. I don't want to write off so many possible suspects, but I can't keep claiming the impossible either. I agree that it was impossible for anyone in the trailer to go to Studio One in that time. Ha! I thought you might be thoughtlessly treading on thin ice again, but I see you at least had an inkling of the truth. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? It's quite simple. True, that, that break in the trailer meeting came right at the time of death. However, the path from there to the scene of the crime was blocked. The fallen Mrs. Monkey had barred the way. At around 2.15, a strong wind, gust of wind knocked off the studio mascot's head. Ergo, when the people in the trailer took a break at 2.30, the way to the studio was blocked. Blocked by Mrs. Monkey's severed head. It's actually Mr. Monkey, but Edworth has a point. And somehow I feel no desire to correct him. I believe we have seen enough evidence. I would like to relieve Mr. Manella from the stand. What? It's over? Very well. The court's opinion on this case is as follows. We have found that there were several other people in Studio 2 on that Studio 2 on that day of the murder. However, it is also clear that none of these people could have gone to Studio 1. They therefore have no relation to the case. Furthermore, with regards to the photo of the Steel Samurai, given the size of the costume, no one other than Mr. Powers could have worn it on that day. All that is lacking is decisive evidence that he is the one who did it. If we had that, I'm afraid I would have to find Mr. Powers guilty. Your Honor, the prosecution is pleased to announce that we have indeed we indeed have decisive evidence. A witness. Who is this witness, Mr. Redworth? My witness saw the very moment when the Steel Samurai skewered the victim. Order. I will have order. I see. The court will take a ten minute recess, after which we will hear your witness. Court is adjourned for recess. October 19th, 11.04am, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 1. What do we do now, Mia? Everyone in that trailer has an alibi. I'm sorry, Phoenix. I guess I was wrong. M Mia! Don't tell me you're giving up. If you give up, what hope do I have? Don't get me wrong. I've never given up on a trial before. Not when there was a chance. Only one thing became clear in your cross-examination. The people in the trailer could not have gone to Studio One. I thought there was more to it than that. But I was wrong. That's all there is. Um, uh, what's going to happen to me? It kinda seems like everyone in that courtroom thinks I did it. They think I'm a murderer. Don't worry, Mr. Powers. If you are innocent, we will prove it. I guarantee it. Leave it to us and be yourself. Be strong. You are the Steel Samurai. Hero to children everywhere. Uh, I, you, thanks. <laughs> okay, Phoenix, this one's for the kids. Let's do it. So yeah, Edgeworth seems to have a decisive witness, so it's probably Cody. And also, sorry if my voices are a bit off. I haven't recorded in, like, half a month. 
October 19th, 11.15 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Court is back in session for the trial of Mr. Will Powers. The prosecution has a concern. As our witness is a grade schooler of tender years, and this is a murder case, we worry that the defense might cause unnecessary trauma with his cruel questioning. Nice to see Edworth taking the moral high ground. However, we have no choice. The prosecution calls Cody Hackens to the stand. <laughs> Your Honor, perhaps you could arrange a box for him to stand on? Oh, right. Guard, please bring him a box. One of those donut crates should do. Will the witness state his name and grade in school? Witness! What? Just because you're all grown up don't mean you can push me around. Mmph. Cody? Answer his question, okay? Hey, it's you, the nice lady. I'm Cody Hackins. I'm in second grade. I get the feeling this is going to be a long, long day. Mr. Edworth, please remember that you're speaking to a child. Try to be gentle. Mm -hmm. Witness, uh, I mean, Cody. He's having trouble with this gentle thing. You were present, uh, you were at Global Studios on the day of the, uh, incident? Got a problem with that? Please tell us what you saw on that day. Why, Pops, you want me to tell you and Gramps with the beard over there? Just, Mr. Edgeworth will be fine. I prefer bearded gentlemen myself. A very long day. Incidentally, photographic equipment is strictly forbidden in this courtroom. <laughs> My apologies, Your Honor. He said he wouldn't testify if he couldn't bring it. I'd like special permission, if that's possible. Wait, so you're saying you had to bargain terms with a kid, and you lost? Hey, I just got this new camera. Don't really know how to use it all that good yet, but I bring it with me wherever I go. Phoenix, I wonder if he had that camera on the day of the murder. Better make a note of it in the court record. Cody's camera added to the court record. Let me go ahead and check what it says. New digital camera. Cody always carries it, though he's still learning how to use it. Very well, Cody. Please testify to the court about what you saw the day of the incident. Witnesses account. I wanted to see a SEAL Samurai rehearsal just once. I found a map on the internet and went to the studios that day. I went through the woods off the path so that the old lady wouldn't catch me. I was going to the studio. I got kind of lost on the way, though, for about 30 minutes. When I came out by the studio, there was a SEAL Samurai. It totally rocked. Right before my eyes out came the bad guy. Of course, the steel samurai took him down. Pow! If I had my camera with me, I would that would have been a time for a shot, I tell ya. Anyway, I couldn't get into the studio, so I went home. An interesting thing to note is that in the 3DS trilogy port of this game, some of the statements might be missing. So, if you're playing that version of the game, keep a lookout for that. Hmm... Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. And be gentle. Remember, you're talking to a child. This kid is tougher than most adults we see in here, honestly. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Phoenix, you're just being... Uh, witnesses account. So, of course, we're pressing everything. You really like the Steel Samurai, huh? Of course I do! I'm... <coughs> I've taped every show, and I go to all the live performances. That's impressive. Have you been to the amusement park? Of course, duh. My dad always takes me. Poor, poor dad. Found a map on the internet and went to the studios that day. Hold it. Was that day the first time you'd been to the studio? Uh, actually, I've been a couple of times. I've never managed to get there on a rehearsal day. And that security lady's always yelling. Right, right. Please continue. Chill, Pops. I'm getting to it. How am I supposed to talk when you keep cutting me all off all the time? Jeez. I went through the woods off the path so that the old lady wouldn't catch me. Off the path? Yeah, you know how the studios are in the valley there? 
If you go off the bath a little, there's a, there's woods. That's where I was. I see. Anyhow. I was going for the studio. Did nothing unusual happen on your way to the studio? Unusual? Did you see this monkey by any chance? Oh, you mean Mr. Monkey? Yeah, I saw him, but his head wasn't busted. So you went straight to the studio. I got kind of lost on the way, though. For about 30 minutes. You got lost in the woods? Yeah, I couldn't figure out which way I was walking. Man, well, I was, was I relieved when I saw the blue studio doors? But guess what happened next? When I came out by the studio, there was the Steel Samurai. The Steel Samurai? Yeah, he was standing by the studio gate. It looked kind of like, yeah, it looked like he was, ugh, it looked like he was thinking about something before going in. Then he opened up the gate and went inside. I see. What then? Totally rocked. Right before my eyes out came the bad guy. What sort of bad guy was it? A guy, person, kind of tall, kind of skinny. Are you sure it was a guy? I don't know. He was kind of far away. Huh. It's being awfully vague. I love how every now and then Mia just looks at us like... <sighs> of course, the seals Samurai took him down. Pow! What happened to the bad guy? Huh? Well, well, he kind of didn't move. Not a bit. Like he was dead. I guess he's a real pro. What a great actor. He, yes, I suppose he was. If I had my camera with me, that would have been the time for a shot, I tell ya. If you had your camera? You mean you weren't carrying your camera then? N no, I wasn't. It's not like I have it all, on all the time. Really? I guess seeing the killing freaked him out when he went home. Phoenix? Remember, he is a child. Use gentle words, but be firm. Easy for you to say. So, the contradiction here is right over here on the last statement. Look. Okay, last statement right here. He says that would have been the time for a shot, I tell you. But earlier, we saw that he is constantly carrying it. So, why wouldn't he be carrying it right then when a rehearsal for the Steel Samurai is going on? Objection. Cody, what you just said seems, well, a little strange. Didn't you say before that you always bring your digital camera wherever you go? You were quite clear about that. Huh? Cody, you shouldn't lie here. You understand that, right? Mr. Wright, a word with you. Uh-oh. Was I putting on the pressure too much? What is this digital camera contraption you're talking about? It's, um, a digital camera, Your Honor. It's kind of a new sort of camera. How do I, how do I explain that? I see. Anyway, Cody. I can't believe you wouldn't bring your camera on a trip to the studios. You did bring it, didn't you? Um, Mr. Wright, how cruel are you to terrorize a child so? I don't care if he's a child or a prosecuting attorney. No one should lie in court. What do you mean, or a prosecuting attorney? Well, Cody? W what? Yeah, so I had my camera. So what? You got a problem with that? So you did have a camera. And did you use this camera? Why would I use it? I I was too busy watching. Hmm. Very well. Please testify to the court about what you were so busy watching. And we'll actually have him testify about that in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, like I just said, we're going to go ahead and have Cody testify about what he was watching, what went down, and maybe we could find a contradiction in there and hopefully by our buy some time for another day we should be done with this trial not the whole case but at least this trial uh next episode so stay tuned for that hope you guys enjoyed and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye